Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making some cupcakes. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make them and how you could turn them into really nice gifts for someone. So let's get started. First things first, hair up, hands washed. That's your two Tev. If here she's watching on, just in case you hear some squeals, it'll be from Georgia. Say hello. <laughs> so I've got everything all laid out that we're going to need. Although it looks like a lot, it really isn't, so don't be daunted or put off by that. First of all, I have my cupcake cases lined in, um, I use a deep muffin tin rather than a, like in the shops they call it a cupcake tray, but it's, it's almost like fairy cakes are quite thin um, and narrow, whereas you want nice kind of deep cupcake cases and tin so that they're nice and straight um, and full. I've also got the oven on at uh, 180 degrees. Now I'm making three gifts today but two batches um, of dozens if that makes sense so I'm going to make six I've made the little toppers I'll talk you through them later these are for our neighbours um, who are lovely they're just the loveliest people and they're moving tomorrow moving on Thursday and it's just going to be really sad so I thought I'll make them some cupcakes and also Thursday is going to be a horrible day because Georgia's also leaving sensory that day which is really sad so again I've made little sensory um, toppers for her teacher Ashley. If you go to Sensory you'll know that these are from the Goodbye song. <laughs> and I'm also making one dozen, so that's 12 cupcakes um, for my friend Vicky. It's her birthday on Saturday and we're all just going to the pub. So I'm going to have six flat topped and six piped up with glitter, um, but we'll get to that later on. So the recipe I'm using, it is a Mary Berry recipe um, which I don't need to kind of note off by heart but I'll show you um, so everything's all here I'll link it if you can see that I'll link it below so that you can see the full recipe but I'll just crack on um, Mary Berry likes to do one bowl so she puts all the ingredients in and mixes it I prefer to do it the way my granny taught me which is the way we're going to do it today so let's get started Jet from the bowl into the cupcake cases just use a normal uh, tablespoon and a nice kind of scoop. doesn't need to be too much. You're using self-raising flour, so it's obviously going to grow. So if you bring it out horizontally and tip it out vertically, and just use your pinky, you shouldn't get any spills. Your mixture should be nice and thick anyway, that it's not going to be runny anywhere. So if you just do nice amounts just now, fill them all up, and then any extra left over, we can top up any that look a little piddly. butter and 150 grams of caster sugar um, in the bowl here and I'm just going to use the whisk to clean it together until it goes kind of nice and fluffy and all mixed in together so excuse the noise It looks kind of like scrambled egg, just a little bad scrambled egg just now, um, but that's what you're looking for. So we add your bowl on again, we're just going to set to zero again, and we need 150 grams of self raising flour. Probably supposed to sieve it, um, but I never do, so it doesn't matter. You can, if, if you've got the time and you want to be fancy, then you can. There's my flour. Um, and then eggs, two eggs for your mixture. Now I've got a little empty egg tin just from earlier for breakfast. So that gets one egg. You counted, Georgia? One. And another one. There you go, perfect. I'll just wash my hands. I actually don't know if this next part is in the recipe that I tag. It's just something that I always do. My granny always taught me um, just to loosen off the mixture a little bit. Just a little splash of milk. Just literally a splash. It doesn't need to be a lot. And she always put in, I know it sounds weird, but she always put salt into cake. She always put in a pinch for good luck when we were little girls and we'd bake with her. So a pinch for good luck. Always put it in. Good shake. 
it's fit enough. And then your vanilla essence. This one's just the pantry from um, Aldi and it's just as good as all the rest. Um, so I like to put in quite a bit. So that's a cap. Okay, let's go for it, why not? Right. So with this mixture again, we're going to use the hand whisk and get it all blended. So again, please excuse the noise. silky texture it's nice and smooth um, and we're going to then transfer this into our cupcakes these are filled and they're ready to go in the oven so as I said preheated to 180 degrees take your tray and pop it in the middle of the oven push it a little bit more and that is you for 20 to 25 minutes I like to do it for 20 bring it out and I can check if it needs any more you can just do it by the minute. I've been in for 20 minutes. They're a wee bit spongy, so I'm just going to use a sharp knife and test it. You've probably done this at school anyway, but if you dip it in and it comes out clear, then you're fine. All that is is a bit of grease from the butter. So as long as there's no actual mixture on your knife, then they're good to go. Cakes have just came out of the oven. These ones are for Vicky's birthday cupcakes, and these ones are still a bit warm, so I'm not going to ice them yet. And um, we'll just let them cool a wee bit more. So while we're waiting, I thought I would show you about um, the fondant. So we just use, this is my big cake box. It was a Soap and Glory gift set, but it's actually such a good box. We're still struggling for so much space in this flat. Some point this year we'll hopefully sell. So just now, it's a Soap and Glory box. Um, so this, again, just pantry from Aldi, because it's really good value. It's a kilo. I would be lying if I told you how much it was. I think it was like two pounds something. Um, hello. I thought you didn't want to play with me. Well, that's nice. So it was a kilo. Yeah, I think it was about two pounds something. So it goes really far. Um, and it's just white fondant. Now, I also have these gel colours. Um, they're a bit random, black, ivory, violet, red, yellow, blue, green and pink but you can mix them really well to get all sorts of colours um, so for instance this kind of lavender colour was the violet and some pink mixed together and you just need the tiniest dot, I use a toothpick and the tiniest little dot into the fondant, add the other colour and just keep mixing it and mixing it, almost like play-doh just keep working it in your hands and it'll eventually come together what you can also do, um, which is quite popular just now, is just put a dot of colour in and kind of mix it as you would like your Play-Doh um, until just before it's came together and you'll get a really nice marbled effect, um, which seems to be quite popular just now. So that's nice too. Um, so, yep, I've rolled out my fondant. Just, this is the thickness of them. Now, these were done last night because you want them to get kind of air to them and they'll go hard if you just if i just done them just now they'd be flopping all over the place ideally i do them about a week before and um, just so they are nice and hard and they're going to keep their shape because they go soft when they go onto the buttercream as well so roll out your fondant till it's about i don't know what half a centimeter or something just under and then i use scone cutters to make the shape I actually just bought these from the pound shop yesterday. I had metal ones, but they started to lose their shape, whereas these aren't going to do that. So it's the second smallest. It's this one here that I use. Um, I don't know if I can get it. This one here, the second smallest. Um, and it gives you a really nice scalloped edge around the side. And you could just leave it as that. But I like to use um, a balling tool as well. I'll just show you which one. This is the kind of thing, again, that you can get in Cloud9. They've got all sorts of gadgets and gizmos for baking. So this is my ball and tool. You've got the, the big end that you can use for running around the edges to make um, fondant flowers um, and lots of other things, but that's the only thing I've used for um, it yet for. And this is the small end. And what you do is just go around the edge and kind of dot round and press down not too far or you'll go all the way through 
and I just think it makes it look quite pretty. You can also layer them up, so you could do like another smaller one and put that on top and you'd have colours. Um, you can do lots of things with it. You could use this kind of tool and make it pretty and lacy around the edge. Um, or roll this kind of one round and it'd be quite kind of jagged, but there's a million things you could do. I also use these little alphabet letters. So it comes with this little tree that I think looks like, do you know the stand you put your Scrabble letters on? It's almost like that. And then you get your letters and just slide them on. Obviously you need to do it backwards. So me being me, I build my word, whatever it is, so it's now saying WK. If I can get it on, so do that and then I test it first on a blob of fondant just to make sure everything's the right way around and it's spelled correct. And then just go around and dot them in. So I've got good luck, bye bye, fine, go. Because I'm not happy that they're leaving, I love them so much. Um, I've got my Ashley ones, goodbye, give me a wave and then happy birthday. I think these kind of things are really nice. I really enjoy receiving personal gift um, gifts. Things that are personalised to me, so if these were my favourite colour, or like this one's to Vicky's favourite colour and her name, these kind of things you could do. The girls did want me to write horrible things, but I was too nervous, I was too scared, so we just went for the standard happy birthday. So you can personalise it in any which way. I thought I'd show you as well, I've got a hen party soon, um, she knows about this, so don't worry. Um, these are some of the ones that I'm okay showing you with. I call them pretty crudes because they are quite pretty. These are little brides. I've got little L plates. I've still got little handcuffs and things to use that use these um, silver balls um, and a couple of little peeps. The other bits are pretty graphic, so you've got pretty and crude. Um, but I get so many requests for these. Everyone seems to want them for hen parties. Um, and again, with a little scalloped edge. You can have them in any colour. You could do any kind of thing with the bride. You could do all sorts of things on them. Um, here is the evidence of the bit that you're not getting <laughs> to see. But yeah, any occasion really. A little bit of fondant goes so far. That block um, that I showed you in the baking box has done all of these and another batch of 24. All of these. And I think I've done, oh, I've done my sister's engagement um, cupcakes as well. And I've still got about half a block. So it goes so far, it's really good. And as I say, the, as far in advance you want to make it, it's sugar, so it's going to stay, it's not going to go off. And I don't know if you can hear that, That's the, it goes really hard. Um, so yeah, you can make all sorts of things. How funny. <laughs> Ice and sugar in, I've got my butter in, and I'm just going to give this another whisk. <laughs> So I've been whisking for a little bit and it doesn't look like it's coming together, can you see? It does look like really fine breadcrumbs. Don't worry, you just need to keep going and it will eventually come together just as you think you've done it wrong. It's not, so just keep going. Yeah, it's now turning into the bad scrambled eggs again, so it does come together. Just keep going, keep going, about five minutes of whisking. Creams all came together and that itself actually does taste okay. To me, it just tastes sweet, it doesn't actually taste of anything if that makes any sense so this is where the sugar and crumbs velvet vanilla comes into play this asks for quite a lot this is a 500 gram bag and it wants um yeah the whole bag to go in i found i was a bit weary to start with i thought that's an awful lot of flavoring to go into something so the first time i used this i made my normal buttercream as always would um, and then just put heaped tablespoons in just one at a time whisked it tasted it yeah, and it was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, we ended up with two uh, heat tablespoons and I found that was just enough. Maybe it's down to personal preference, but it did taste nice and vanilla, nice and smooth, but not artificial and not too sweet either. So that's what I'm going to do again today. Um, I have a spoon. So, 
maybe maybe just with the vanilla one it's like that they, they had every flavor you could imagine they've got a gin and tonic one that i really want to try and then they had chocolate ones that i'm intrigued by there was like um chocolate jaffa cake and um, there was a cinnamon swirl one that kind of yeah i'm intrigued by that as well so i mean heaps teaspoons a uh, tablespoons one two i'll give that a whisk and then i'll taste maybe it's different again but let's have a see See that to me is more than enough. It still tastes vanilla. It doesn't taste too sweet, and it's not too grainy. Sometimes if you put too much sugar powder in, you're going to feel it in your teeth, and it kind of freaks me out a wee bit. So buttercream all ready to go. I just need to wait on these cakes cooling a wee bit more, and I'll show you different piping techniques. I wasn't out running, so I filled up the bag here. And um, just use a spoon. You can keep the bag in here if you like. Kind of gets in my way. And um, keep filling it up. If you get any air holes. There's one here. Just keep teasing it out and then you can fill it back up. Um, if you get an air hole when it comes to the bottom when you're piping, it's just going to burst out and you're going to get a bit of a splat rather than a nice neat swirl that you're you're wanting to create. So just keep pinching it all the way down, pushing to the nozzle and that will get all the air out. Oh. There we go. And then twist it. So if you twist it between your finger and your thumb and then you can grasp it and then you want to kind of push it until it starts to come out. So I'll show you different ways of doing it. Clear enough for you. Um, so what you can do for your traditional kind of whipped cupcake that looks almost like a Mr. Whippy, if you just start from right from the edge on the outside, you want to squeeze. You're squeezing from the top, not from the bottom. So this hand's just for support. And squeeze and then come up a level and then up a level and then squeeze press down and pull off and that's how you get this kind of again because it's a, a 2d I like it's almost like a flower it's quite a pretty a pretty way to pipe so you can do that and um, what I'll do is three of these and three of the other way just so that it's almost kind of equal in the the gift what you can also do, so that's working from the outside to the inside. If you do it from the inside out, so pipe and then work your way around. Just fall in a nice neat circle. And then with this one, you're not squeezing, you're just going to try and lay off the squeezing. And drag it round so you get a neat finish. And that's how you get a rose. Isn't that pretty? This way is really good for the flat toppers, I think. Um, because you don't need it to be this high you're just going to have a flat topper um, so we'll do three of these and three of these cupcakes all finished I've piped them all I've popped the toppers on just place it on and tap it with your finger it doesn't need to be squished or you're going to lose the nice piping around the outside um, and then I've placed them in these lovely cake boxes from B&M they come in a set of four for $1.99 and it holds six cakes which I think is great there's lots of different designs but I thought these ones are pretty and then they've got a little label on just to seal it over so no I don't know any wee sneaky fingers can go in I wonder who I could be talking about sneaky fingers <laughs> yeah so Ashley's are finished as well I'm just going to show you about edible glitter and um, glitter as well that adds a nice touch to cake Watch over these are the cupcakes here I've iced them all up the way and this is rainbow dust again that you can you can get it online and things but um, you can get it from cloud nine and um, through in Queensley and usually I would use a pastry brush but I cannot find it I've texted my husband and he's at work and it's probably not of any importance just now so I've also got this makeup brush which has never been used for makeup so please don't panic um, I just didn't really know why you would use this in a makeup bag so I thought it'd be perfect for instead of using glitter you can get lustering so I kind of brush that over and it gives things a nice shimmer almost like a mermaid kind of look um, so I've done that before in a few cakes just to give it a nice sheen so unfortunately we're going to use this hopefully it works in the same way but just dab the brush into the glitter and just shake over yeah that's working fab now I've also learned the hard way that you should put the cakes onto kitchen roll when you do this, I used to just do it while it was on the the drying rack and then clean it up with a microfiber and stick it all in the wash and then Martin went to work with glittery jumpers, a glittery beard, the lot. So I've been warned if I'm using glitter. If I have to use glitter was the sentence, of course I have to use glitter. If you have to use glitter, use kitchen roll. So he's quite smart sometimes. 
So as simple as that, that only took a couple of seconds and hopefully you can see on the camera. But it's so cute, it's so sparkly, it's edible as well, so it's absolutely fine um, to add to cakes and things. So here we are, I'm just going to pop on the toppers. So as I said, you just pop it on and press it with your finger. You don't want it to squish down. So I've got two that say thanks, Ashley. I couldn't fit thank you. I think thank you is more meaningful, but I couldn't fit it on. I've got say goodbye. Oh, it's so sad. I can't believe she's leaving. She's such a big girl already. She doesn't need to leave, but she's into, where are you? Literally everything. Where are you? Climbing up. We need to baby proof this place, don't we? Yeah. And give me a weave. So that's the, the words from our little sensory song. And I think they're just cute. I've done these in yellow. Um, the baby sensory colours are yellow and green. I didn't think green was that. I think that green's a bit Halloween-y. Um, so I thought we'll best not do that. So this is how the boxes come. Just flip it open. I like to bend the lid back first. Start there. Just make the joints a bit sturdier. Pop out the box. And then you've got your little inserts. You want to be careful as well when you use this kind of um, like craft paper, like the brown craft paper. If you get any butter or butter icing on it, it's going to get greasy. So just be careful that your fingers are completely dry and clean or you're going to get oily marks on your, your box. For, I only use these ones from B&M for gifts um, that are for six. Any more than that, I normally just get the, the white sturdy dozen boxes again from Cloud9. You can get them on eBay as well, but I like Cloud9. Thanks Ashley, say goodbye. Give me a wave. Just like that, pop it all in. And I think that just makes a gorgeous little gift. So we'll close it over. Two gifts made in next to no time. Um, really personalised and any gift that's been handmade I always think is appreciated. So yeah, really simple. I hope you've got an occasion coming up soon that you could make some. If you've got any questions, please do message me because I'm always, I'm always happy to help. Um, and I'll post a picture of Vicky's when they're all finished. They're still cooling. Oh, and we'll see you again soon for another video. Thank you.